Good day, you sexy internet travelers. Bailey here, and today we are back with episode 9 of Kuzu no Honkai. So let's dive in. So the episode starts off with us learning that Mugi never did come back for Hanabi that night, and all he said was an empty, unexplanatory sorry. And this frustrates Hanabi because she knows he's just being manipulated by Minagawa. And the assertion is made that all men just want to be manipulated, introducing the theme of this episode, loneliness. Would you stay in a relationship just to avoid being alone, despite you knowing that you are just a substitute or just a toy for the other person? I think I, unfortunately, probably would. The episode then proceeds to really get my hopes up, only to immediately donkey kick me in the throat with reality. Etron invites Hanabi to go on vacation, and immediately I get my hopes up because I was all on board the Hanabi Etron ship, but my ship immediately gets sunk with severe depression. They arrive at Etron's summer house under the impression that they will be alone, only to find her cousin is at the door to greet them. So it's already off to a bumpy start, and no, I really feel like this trip could have gone totally differently had they been alone. Does anyone else really feel feel that way or is this just me trying too hard to sail this ship? Because there's a couple of points during this trip that prompt some speculation as to how Hanabi feels about Echon, be it leaning over to give her a kiss or blushing every time they're together. So honestly, I feel like this guy ruined everything. And Etron agrees with me because she was capitalizing on the fact that Hanabi got rejected by Kanai and ditched by Muki and was gonna exploit her emotional frailty while she still had the chance, which I thought was a genius plan, albeit a fair bit manipulative. We then get to see a flashback of Hanabi giving Etron a small candy and Etron says, that she'd become so fragile that a single touch could break her. And this makes me wonder, could she have fallen for anyone that would have shown her kindness? Was she just looking for a bright ray of hope to cling to in what was obviously an extremely bleak situation? Now, though I find this question interesting to think about, I think it's fairly irrelevant, and it drives me nuts when I hear people in relationships wondering if it was them just because they were there at the right place in the right time. Because even if it could have been anyone, it doesn't matter because it was Hanabi, or it was you, or it was that other person. Now to look at my most hated individual of the episode, this guy, whom, uh, whom I actually really don't dislike because honestly, he demonstrates the opposite approach to decision making. Hanabi, Echon, Mugi, and Minagawa all represent different approaches to relationships, but they all stem from the same source, and that source is emotion. Echon's cousin illuminates an approach characterized by rationality and logic. He questions Etron's ability to follow through due to her emotional state and questions whether or not it is even possible for a Hanabi to have romantic feelings for her. He encourages Hanabi to assess how she truly perceives Etron. And now the reason he is able to logically assess the holes of this situation is because he is detached from the situation and able to analyze it as a third party. Yet strangely, he is incapable of doing the same in his own relationship, wherein he sees that Etchon is possibly not even attracted to men, or as a minimum, not attracted to him, and yet he pursues her anyway, regardless of logic. Now comes the most confusing moment of the entire episode. So at the height of Hanabi and Etchon's emotional train of fire, they reach some ambiguous resolution and kiss, and both think to themselves, that they don't want to forget this taste. But then Hanabi seems to be asking for a platonic relationship, and she also seems to be enjoying her relationship with Etchon, which we see with her leaning over to kiss her, and also the aforementioned line. And so this is quite confusing. The only rationale for this decision could be that Hanabi is simply too overwhelmed with emotions, from being dumped by Mugi to being rejected by Kanai, now only to have a tremendously heartfelt confession presented to her in a type of relationship that she doesn't have experience with. And honestly, that's a completely valid reason. However, it still makes my heart sink lower than Kim Jong-un's ethics. The episode ends with the theme of loneliness finally being brought full circle. Hanabi is reflecting on how different it is to be in school while not having any relations with anyone, and how it brings her this sense of uneasiness and discomfort. And then, along comes Noriko with a dose of wisdom. She says, 
The Danish you get at the school store yourself can still taste good. There is so much to be learned with this statement. We so often get our minds wrapped around the idea that without that special person in our lives, we can't live and things can't be the same. And yeah, sure, things won't be the same. But that doesn't mean that you still can't enjoy all the things life has to offer like the Danish at the school store. Thank you all very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please share, like, and subscribe for more. And as always, stay sexy and a net